a dream I know Deep up my feelings for you Hello reality viewers, welcome back again to Reality Latest Gist, the home of news and politics. For this channel, we they drop news every day and we they react to every video when it comes our way. And our reality news now we they drop for this channel and we they also they talk on as it be. If today not the first time we say they come across this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you are returning subscribers, I appreciate all of you now for our massive support to this channel i say may god bless all of you now in jesus name amen i get video away i want to present to una this very moment and i'm going to follow now they watch the video after we don't watch them together make we drop our opinion constructively for the comment section like our videos and also share our videos if possible bye for now hello my people good morning good afternoon good evening please i want you to listen to this video he say not everything will wait for god to do for us because God already gave you the power to use. God will never come down from heaven, come and help you. Now we need to help ourselves to make the move the movement. Please watch the video. If you watch the video to the end, please watch the video to the end so that you can understand what did this man talk about. Something Nigerians are doing that we really, really need to stop. In fact, two things, particularly regarding this whole judgment that the tribunal judges gave concerning the Peter Obi's petition. We all witnessed the affront. We all witnessed the joke of the tribunal judges in the so-called judgment they gave. Forget all the talks that are going on on the side. Some people praising the judgment. We all saw how they use the word ridiculous for the petitioners, both Peter Obi and Atiku. But of course we know that if we are looking at that word ridiculous, that word applies more to the judgment given by the tribunal judges than to the petition itself. Why do I say so? On all the grounds that the tribunal judges struck out, the excuse they gave was so lame that even a layman will find it very, very funny. But I'm not here to argue or banter about the tribunal judges because that's what they expect us to do. And it is part of the things that Nigerians are doing. According to Pastor Sarah Omaku of Family Worship Center, it appears that these politicians, and particularly those behind the politicians, like I always say, don't forget that these politicians are not acting on their own. Yes, they have a humongous part of the blame, but there are forces behind the scenes, forces, international forces, multinational forces that are pulling the strings behind the scenes that are pushing them to do the things that they do. Now, these people appear to understand the Nigerian population very, very well. In fact, the whole African population. And of course, why wouldn't they understand when it is the, the when they are the ones that actually programmed us to be the way we are you understand and what did pastor Cyril Marco say he said that these politicians understand us so well that whatever it is that they do however wrong or however hard it is on nigerians nigerians will talk about it for one day or two days and then they forget about it and move on now nigerians are even doing much worse than moving on many people are talking about leaving it to god in fact i spoke with a politician who politician politician somebody who has risen up to very high positions of political power in nigeria and he was saying that oh he's not interested in the tribunal judges that these judges even the supreme court will not deliver justice to nigeria and to nigerians that what he is looking at is that god will intervene and God will sort it out the way he sorted out our bachelor. Now, I am not in disagreement that God can intervene and sort things out the way he sorted things out with our bachelor. I am not in agree uh, disagreement with that. But these two things are things that we must stop doing if we want to save Nigeria. If we want to take back Nigeria from the hands of the people who seek to destroy it. We must stop moving on 
from issues that are as serious as this and we must stop leaving it to God. There's a reason that we must stop this. God will not do for you what he has given you power to do for yourself. God will not do for you what he has given you the sense and the ability to do for yourself. I visited my friend the other day and he was sick, really, really sick. I think he had malaria or so. They had done some tests and um, he had invited a nurse over to come and give him injection for anti-malaria. But while he was doing that, he was feeling really, really pressed. And he kept saying it, I'm pressed, I'm pressed, I'm pressed. I need to go to the um, restroom. But then he says, oh, I'm very, very tired. I didn't ask him. On the one hand, you say you are pressed. I understand that you are down with malaria. But what do you expect us to do? Do you expect us to carry you into the restroom? I mean, you have high temperature. Yeah, you have high fever. We can feel it. You're weak. But does that mean that you cannot get up and go to the restroom and ease yourself? And then he got up, went to the bathroom and eased himself and came back. You see, no matter how sick that person thinks he is, he cannot expect God to come and help him to urinate or to excrete in the toilet, no matter how sick he is, because God has given him that power and the enablement, the, the sense to ease himself by himself. God will not come down and help you to ease yourself. So all this leaving it to God, yes, God can intervene and usually God's intervention is good. But we cannot keep treating such sensitive issues in Nigeria by simply saying, leave it to God or moving on. No, God has given us the sense, God has given us the power and the ability to do something about this kind of joke of a judgment that the tribunal judges give out. Until we do these things, forget we are not moving anywhere. Because you see, the more we keep leaving it to God, the more we keep moving on and leaving it to God, the more these politicians will keep doing these wicked things they do to us. Because if you don't know, they are ganging up against us. It is the same thing that Tinubu did in Lagos, where he got people in the executive, of course, as the governor, he is the one that would choose his cabinet. And then he was able to push his cronies into the legislature, push his cronies into the judiciary. And what did they do? They all came together and came up with the draconian and satanic Lagos pensions law that gave them humongous amount of benefits that on a normal day should be sinful, immoral, and un un unacceptable. But they passed it into law and it became law. See, the more we sit down and move on and say, oh, leave it to God. These people do not leave it to God. They connive, they gang up, and they do the things they do. If we sit down and continue to say we leave it to God, they will continue to have their way, and we will continue to have our say. Abi, is that not the democracy or the definition of democracy? We'll keep talking, 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 and they will sit down and watch us for one day, two days. When they see that we are tired of talking, they will move on to do even worse things. Have you not seen the trend? The same gang up that happened against Lagosians in Lagos is what Tinubu is manifesting at the national level. He has dissolved the legislature and now we are seeing the signs of dissolving the judiciary into the executive. They all become one. Perhaps it's because of the 30 billion palliative that was given to the judiciary and the 110 billion for the legislature. All of them now are working together, ganging up against the collective interest of Nigeria and you are talking about leaving it to God, talking about moving on. No, we must not move on because the more we do this, the more they will continue to do worse things. Have you not observed it? The things that Tinubu started doing from May 29th, they are, they keep getting worse on a daily basis. This is the worst first hundred days of any president in the history of the world, not even just in the history of Nigeria. We must act. We must act. What can we do? Do you hear you ask? There's a lot we can do. But the first thing to start with is the advice that the deposed president of Gabon gave 
you know, to his friends. You remember, make noise, make noise. Many people joked. In fact, there's a viral music video that is going on about that statement. Make noise, make noise. But there's a lot of sense behind that make noise. In fact, there are several journalists, Western trained journalists, that have come out to say that people should make noise. When you make noise and keep making noise, then the noise gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where these wicked politicians can no longer afford to ignore it. Yes, make noise. In fact, the more noise you make, the more empowered and enlightened Nigerians are. Many Nigerians are still out there. They don't understand the joke that is in this judgment that the tribunal gave how do you say that oh fct yes the constitution may say that it must uh, it must be cited or looked at like a state but it is not a state so now that the tribunal has said oh fct is like any other state so the fct should be getting ready to have its governorship election and state of house of assembly elections but do we have that no fct is special not in a way that makes residents of sfct more higher in power than any other state it is because fct is a melting pot a melting pot of all the states of nigeria fct is not made up of only one particular group of people because i hear arguments that some of the supporters and even lawyers senior advocates of nigeria are making that are we saying that fct is uh, uh, bigger than any other state citizens of fct are bigger than any other state excuse me who are the citizens of fct they are the citizens of all the other states you have deltans you have lagosians you have zamfarans you have sokoto you have people from across the states being in abuja in fct so fct is a special location by its creation that's why it does not have a governor and does not have three senators like every others or nine or 14 house of rep leaders like the others it does not have state house of assembly it is special but from the judgment we saw from the judges who are supposed to be so learned that they are in the members of the inner bench of the bar look at the judgment they gave and they gave it because they know they also know those behind them know that when they give such ridiculous judgment calling the petition ridiculous nigerians will talk 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 for a few days and they will go quiet they these wicked politicians will then continue to do even worse worse things we must stop it so what are we going to do we must make noise make noise as much noise as you can make make noise make noise make noise that's it make noise i've said it these politicians will keep doing these things they do because they can they, many of them have dual citizenships they have houses, they have money stashed away in other countries. The more they can do this, as long as they can do this, as long as they can jet out to get health benefits abroad. The other day, the Jews Okalu went to America for health reasons. Um, Tinubu always goes out to either France to UK now, and others go to sometimes even India. So long as our government officials, in fact, all government workers, so long as they can travel abroad to save money abroad, to seek medical treatment, to get education, as long as they can do these things. Nigeria will be where it is. They will continue to gang up against Nigeria and Nigerians. You see, when it comes to these people, there's no religion that divides them. There's no ethnicity that divides them. They have one religion, and that's elitism. They have one tribe, and that's elitism. So it's a gang up. It's a, it's, 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 it's a situation between the elites and the citizens that's what it is so if you think that you will hide behind the ethnic sentiments or religious sentiments and refuse to say the truth i pity you and may the judgment of god come upon you may the judgment instant judgment of god i don't even know why god delays in giving his judgment instant judgment of god may come upon you because it just shows that you are putting sentiments above the sufferings of the majority of nigeria it is time for us to ban these things for these politicians these government workers ban them from saving money abroad ban them from being in possession or buying houses and properties abroad ban them from going abroad for medical care 
getting an education abroad ban them we have to pass this law we'll keep making noise until the noise is too big for these wicked politicians to discount on us so if you did right when i still live when i comment below if you did bad when i still live when i comment below when i remember say everybody gets freedom of speech okay all right thank you very much to so if you did watch me you never subscribe my brother sister i beg you in the name of god make you hit that red button and turn on the notification bell so each time i upload any video you will get you will get notification and you will constantly watch me thank you very much see you again in my other video i love you all bye bye